watching uh, Indie Film Cafe. I'm Jonathan Moody, and I'm here with... Polly Brzezinski, known as the Moo Cow Moo. And welcome to our end of the month haul. Yay! Uh, we're going to do this every end of the month. So uh, this is for uh, September 2018. And um, I don't, you can't see it over here, but he's got a ton of movies. And I've got, uh, you know, a good amount. There was so. a good, it was a good month in September. Yeah, he had more than I did. Um, I'm hoping that October is a lot better for me, but um, it's okay. It's just you know every now and again. Usually I don't get this much stuff, but uh, kind of went a little nuts as it is. You know how it is. So we also got Lady joining us. If you can't tell, yeah, the end down here. Let's... Somebody's crushing continuity monkey with your. Oh, I'm sorry. Dark. And my glasses. Oh, gonna watch out with your glasses. All right. Anyway. So uh, he's gonna go off because he's got way, he's got like twenty three uh, DVDs to get, get through, and I've got um, I've got like sixteen. Yeah, so and just you know to keep it short, I'll you know I'm not gonna dwell too much on them. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to either watch some of these movies and do videos on them, or just talk about them at another time. So mm -hmm. just to save a little bit of time. But um, so my first group is gonna be the largest group. That'll be ten. And of that 10, the first five are actually decent films. Um, so my first one is the classic Daughters of Darkness, uh, directed by Harry Kumel. That is one of the classic, classic European vampire movies. Um, not a lot to say that hasn't already been said about this particular film. It's really, really good. This the is extras. a blue underground release, and it has all kinds of cool stuff. It's got audio commentary. Uh, from uh, Harry Kumel, and it's also got a second one with the star John Carlin and uh, David uh, Delvell, and then it's got a small um, little featurette about the locations, uh, another one where they're interviewing uh, Danielle um, Ouimet, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I'm not French, uh, and then there's another interview with Andrea Rao, um, and then trailers and stuff like that, so, you know, Blue Underground puts out a lot of good stuff, um, tends to be a little bit more on the TNA stuff, but they also tend to do some of the steamier um, uh, horror films that were out there, especially some of the really good ones, especially some of the forgotten ones. So if you're looking for something like Daughters of Darkness, I would highly recommend going with this version. Is that going to be on one of your uh, forgotten Possibly. Classics? Possibly. We shall see. There's already so many up there. Uh, next one is not a particularly forgotten one. It's, most people will know it. And it is the classic Kill Baby Kill from Mario Bava, uh, one of my favorite movies um, with Barbara Steele, of course, who is always wonderful. Uh, and this is a Diamond Entertainment uh, collection, and it's got um, interactive menus and graphics and stuff like that. Um, and then there's just some basic information about the people. There's, there's nothing like commentary or anything like that, unfortunately. That's okay. <clears throat> and speaking of Barbara Steele, I also managed to pick up Nightmare Castle, um, not quite at the same level as Kill, uh, Kill Baby Kill or as you know some of the other films are, but this was always a good movie too. This this might I might end up doing for forgotten movie classics. Um, it's just beautifully shot, black and white, and um, you know if you really sort of like dig the old uh, you know uh, Euro trash kind of films, it's not trash. Um, very very cool, and yeah, again it's pretty basic. I love movies set in a castle, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really really good. Um, next one is a movie that, uh, it's not a horror film, and I'm not even sure, I guess you can call it an, an, an uh, um, indie film, but it's called The Little Hours, and this, this kind of wacky nun movie with some of my favorite, favorite actresses in there. So Alison Brie is in there, and, um, you know, uh, David Franco's in there, Kate Minucci's in there, John C. Riley, um, and it's just, just this crazy, crazy nun nuntastic film that I've heard a lot of good funny things about so I definitely want to check that out and then finally this is a movie I've heard kind of good things and bad things with it's called what we do is is secret and it is kind of a biopic of uh, Darby Crash who is the very very uh, influential lead singer to the movie the germs I've been waiting for a biopic of his life for a long long time um, I've heard good things and bad things about it. Um, we'll see. Ooh, it's got a great cast. Yeah, though. Shane West, Bijou Phillips, Rick Gonzalez, Noel Segan, and it's written and directed by Roger Crossman. So um, this has got some commentary, and it's got uh, a few other little bits and pieces on there too. 
and um, I imagine hopefully the music should be really, really good. So yeah, if anyone is into punk as much as I am, something like this would be waiting here. Again, I've heard good things and bad things. We'll see. So that's the first five of my good films, or at least potentially good films. Now let's go on to five of the stinkers. Mm. <clears throat> so, first stinker is uh, this one. It is Frank Peretti's Hangman's Curse. And this is sort of a, from what I understand, one of those haunted uh, hospital movies. And I think it's another group of people who go exploring or ghost hunters and all that kind of thing. I don't know a whole lot about it. So, um, but it was cheap. It was like 99 cents or something crazy like that. So I grabbed it. It's got some special features on it too, like uh, uh, from page to screen feature at and some other things. Okay, okay, sounds good. Um, here's another ghost hunter movie called Ghost Watchers. Um, I honestly don't know that anybody involved that. Julian Burns, Marianne Harden, Jennifer mm -hmm. Silveray. I don't know any of those folks. Oh, I know David A. Cross. He's yeah, he's actually, the director. Yeah, he's the director. He actually lives, I believe he lives in Maryland. Oh, okay. There you so go. It might be filmed in Maryland. So we'll see what this is like. Next, I have a movie. This is very loosely based on a true story. It's called Vampire Clan. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but this was in the, the news maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. It was about this group of wackadoodle teenagers who decide that they want to be real vampires. And so they sort of make this little pact with this local gothy loser guy to sort of go out and kill some people and drink their blood and kind of goes into all about that. So it's, it's not so much a horror movie as more of a police drama, um, sort of dressed up like a horror movie. But we'll see. Um, I, again, I've heard Clan. I've heard not so many good things about it. Uh, we shall see. And then I have uh, the last two in this group is a couple of collection movies. This is the Highway to Hell collection uh, with six movies in there, including Night Drive, Followed Home, Bunny Man, mm -hmm. Breadcrumbs, The Eves, and Drifter. At least four of those movies I know. Uh, but I do not know Night Drive, and I do not know Drifter. I will just say, you've never seen Bunny Man or have you? Oh, I've seen Bunny Man. Bunny Man is horrible. Oh, yeah. I, I've heard, like, the the second one was better, and the third one was just kind of boring. But uh, this one is just god-awful. It's so annoying. The guy is just, it's mainly like a bunny man truck driver, like, <laughs> most of the time. And he's just beeping at people. Like, half the I, I had to stop it. Like, I, I couldn't finish it because I couldn't get through him just beeping so much. We'll it's, have to see this uh, on Indie Film Cafe. No. <laughs> I'll put my foot down on that one. Aww. And then the last uh, group one is Hostile Hauntings. Uh, I believe that is at Asylum. Um, so, uh, oh no, Pendulum, sorry. Pendulum, Pendulum. Sorry, Pendulum. Always the mark of quality. Um, <laughs> and this includes H.P. Lovecraft's The Shun House, Woodlands Haunting 2, The Sum the Bullists, Hellbound Book of the Dead, uh, The River Legend of La Lorna, and uh, Sleep Disorder. Now. I've known, I've seen the, the Shun House before, and it's actually not a bad film. But for an indie film, it's really not too bad. Same thing with La Lorna. Um, you know, again, these, these are the kind of movies that their main issue with them is that they just don't have enough money. But for the most part, they're not bad films. A couple of the other ones, I'm not so sure about. Where did you uh, get these? Um, I don't remember at this point, because okay. it's been a month, and I have a ton of movies, and I just don't recall. Okay. <laughs> so, what did you get? All right. Some of your stuff. Well, we're going to kick it off here. And um, so uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Southland Tales, which um, comes with a US, US Dent TV surveilling the Southland feature ad. And this is the way the world ends animated short. I watched this movie just, you know, when I picked it up. Um, I was so excited because I love Donnie Darko. And I didn't like the box that much. I just thought it was okay. It just, it was kind of um boring uh and this movie is like if you got a uh, if you got millions and millions of dollars to do your next movie and you decide to just blow all the money on stuff that's what this movie is it's just a big blowout of of you know cast like it's got Dwayne Sarah Johnson Sarah Sarah, Mountain, yeah. Sarah Michelle Geller, Sean William Scott I mean the cast is ridiculous I mean um Christopher Lambert um <laughs> Uh, John Larroquette, Bay Ling, John Lovitz, Mandy Moore, Holmes wow. Osborne, that's, Cherry O'Terry, and Amy Poehler. That's both from where the money went. Wallace Shawn, Kevin Smith, and Justin Timberlake. 
I mean, talk about a weird assortment of characters too, like actors. Um, next one I got from uh, Walmart, because uh, that was from Walmart, and this was also the same day, was a Ouija house, oh, yeah. uh, which we saw. We didn't do a commentary, or didn't do a review of it yet, but um, uh, we might at some point. We just got to rewatch it. There's, it's, it's one of those movies where you're just like, mm, we're just not sure if we want to review it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, what, what's the little eight ball when you pick it up and say, uh, it can't be certain. Can't or, be certain. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It, it, the, the problem is it's just got, it's got too much stuff going on at once and we are very confused yeah. as to, you know, as to things. So, um, other than that though, the cast was great. Misha Barton, Tara Reed, um, Dee Wallace and, uh, and the lovely, lovely Carly Schroeder. We like, like her. the lead, and she was wonderful in this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I just have to say the writing just got a little, a little confusing at times, and I think a lot of these things happen in the um, when you mix a lot of different people together, like things get kind of bumbled up and, and and confused and everything, and like one person wants one thing, there's too many cooks in the kitchen, kind of thing. Bumbled think, up and confused. Yeah, I feel like that was that this movie. Good. Yeah. It's just too many things going on. And, you know, I wasn't like, what was that doll? Like, what? Why, why did they have that doll in the movie? Uh, I was like, did they bring Mandy back? Which, <laughs> you know, we'll talk about later. That'd have been cool. We'll mash up. Yes. Um, so next, I got Evil, uh, Evil Blood, Young, uh, no, but Young Blood, Evil Intentions. Um, totally dyslexic on that title. Um, this does not. I don't know if it comes with commentary or not. It doesn't say on the cover. Um, I'd have to check. It's 140 minutes. Oh, is that the one we started? No, this is it's another too movie. Long. Okay. That was another movie. Uh, but yeah, this is this is 140 minutes. Did not even see that. So that'll be interesting to watch. Um, it's got uh, it's, it's got some cool people in it. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman. Um, uh, he's in everything. Count yes. Smokula. Um, oh dear. Butch Patrick. Uh, Jameson Newlander from. Lost Boys and Sal uh, Lizard, um, and directed and by um, Myron, Myron Smith and uh, uh, what was the other Matt uh, Smith? I guess they're brothers. So two brother guys, uh, the Smith brothers. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Just I'm gonna check that out. I'll review it on my own. Uh, I don't want to put you through that, but he may watch this one, which is oh, yeah. the Invasion of the Killer. Uh, uh, cicadas. Cicadas. Sweet. Say, oh, you say that wrong. But John R. Price and um, Hugh Gomez and um, England Simpson, who I know, and Simpson. C. Martin Croker, <laughs> who, uh, who played Brack on the Brack Show slash uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. He does a voice. So I'm, I'm wondering if he voiced the cicada. That'd be funny. Buzz, buzz. Um, so we'll have to check that out. It also comes with director commentary with uh, Matt Smith and Myron Smith. And a deleted scene with Ginny Janetti, who we both Ooh. know. So, looking forward to that. All right, so the next one I'm going to bring up, uh, I got from Amazon. And this was one that you want to grab yours too, since we'll be talking about that. Dun, da, da. We both got ankle, ankle biters. biters. We got the same one too, I guess. The same. I think so. I don't think there was, it came out in any Three other Three feet time. tall, two inch fangs. So, uh, we will be reviewing this this month. Uh, for October. So. Yay. There you go. Uh, and that kicks off yours. So that was the first one on yours. Yeah. Okay, so my next group of five includes... Ankle biters. Um, well, and ankle biters, uh, which you already saw. Um, and then I ended up seeing this five movie pack of the classic Phantasm film. So it's Phantasm 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and I believe it's that's pretty much all of them at this point. Um, is that... Is that is Ravager the newest one? Yeah, right. Ravager's the newest one. Oh, wow. And it's got commentary. Right. Oh, and yeah. it's got commentary. I have not seen Ravager yet. Uh, most of my hardcore friends who love Phantasm don't like it. I don't think the Phantasm movies are very good, frankly. I think they're confusing as hell, but I still like them, uh, especially the first one. The first one is a, is a classic. It's like... You know, it's like completely divorced from reality. It's a bizarre movie, but um, it's fun. So it's fun. I like it. Next, we got a, I believe this is a South Korean film, Wuchi the Demon Slayer, which is all kinds of crazy special effects and digital stuff going on. And 
Um, the funny thing is that from what I understand, uh, this guy, uh, in order to fight this demon, he has to summon the spirit of this 7,000-year-old sorcerer who's not very PC, and uh, he's like taken out of a taken out of a carpet or out of a rug because he's got put in there because people couldn't stand him anymore. He was such a pain in the ass. Wait, what? Yeah. He was put into a rug? Yeah, the, 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 the sorcerer, and so he has to be summoned out of it in order to help this kid fight the demon. So He has to be summoned out of a rug? Yeah, it's either a rug or a painting or something like that. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so I can't wait to see that. That should be that fun. Sounds, that sounds amazing. Next, we have another group. Uh, this is the Vampire Collectors 4-Pack, <clears throat> uh, and it includes Shadow Zone, The Undead Express, Vampire Wars Battle for the Universe, uh, Nadja, and then the case of the Whitechapel Vampires. Now, Nadja I knew about, and I've been trying to get a hold of the copy of that for a while. Um, and then um, Vampire Wars I had seen before with Michael Ironside, um, but the other two I did not, I did not see. So it should be interesting. Oh wow, Chauncey uh, Leoparde, I think, or whatever from uh, uh, Sandlot. Oh, okay, there that's you go. What, and he was in Freaks and Geeks. He was the bully in Freaks right. and Geeks, okay. you know, and stuff. So that's cool. So I guess this is when he was a kid, uh, probably around the time of. Uh, uh, I would say probably around the time of uh, Sandlot and stuff. All right, that's there pretty you go. cool. And then the finally in this group uh, is one that I had a long time ago in VHS, but have not had it since. So when I saw it, I had to grab it. And it is the classic Bedtime for Bonzo with former President Ronald Reagan <laughs> at his Bonzoist. Um, and it's just a goofy, ridiculous, absurd monkey movie, you know? Monkey so, movie. Continuity Monkey, Monkey, Monkey loves to, this. He so wants to watch it. This you. this is definitely something we might talk about doing for uh, Indie Film Cafe. We'll have to see. Because I know Jen loves her classic movies. Well, we may have to do that for another podcast or something. Possibly. Uh, anyway, all right. So here's my next five, I guess. I'll, uh, perfect. Yay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd have to do six the next time. But it's five. Okay, so yes, so as uh, he said, he's uh, excited to see this, but um, Valley Girl, uh, which I still haven't seen. Really? Uh, oh never, my god. Never seen it. Um, and this comes with a commentary with Martha Coolidge, so that's pretty cool. Nick Cage's best movie. Um, yeah, I, I just haven't seen it. And Deborah Foreman. Deborah um, Foreman's wonderful. Uh, she was, I, I fell <laughs> in love with her when I first saw Lunatics, A Love Story. Which sounds strange, but that's like... Oh, no, you know. no, I understand. And then you'll be happy to know that I have a copy of Lobster Men from Mars, which also has uh, Deborah Foreman in it. Awesome. So, um, and then uh, Adventures in Babysitting, which I just rewatched the other day. and it, I hadn't seen it in so long. It was almost like rewatching it again. And they actually had my buddy, uh, my pet monster in the, uh, oh, okay. in the movie. Um, uh, the little girl has a uh, My Pet Monster doll, which... Seemed a little strange that the little girl would have it, you know, or whatever. But anyway. Girls uh, like monsters too. I guess. Uh, but I guess there was product placement too. Cause you could literally see it. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it yeah. was probably to get it out there. But anyway, uh, this is fun. Um, goofy little. Have you you've seen Adventures oh, yeah. of Babysitting? It's a classic kind of. Um, Chris Columbus's first film. And I mean, it was all over the place. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a road trip movie in a way where they're just trying, you know, their car breaks down and all this crazy stuff happens while she's babysitting. Uh, favorite scene in all of that was uh, the, um, you gotta sing the blues if you wanna get out of here thing. So she starts sing, they all start singing the babysitter blues. It's just so silly and campy and fun. 80s movie, great movie, 80s movie. Speaking of another 80s movie. Dun, da, da. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Yay. which comes with this insert, which we're going to put up on the wall. Yay, that's awesome, it's one yeah. of my favorites. So there you go. Uh, this has commentary. Uh, oh, uh, Adventures in Babysitting did not have any commentary, which is kind of a bummer. I'm hoping they release a uh, Blu-ray edition of Adventures in Babysitting with Chris Columbus commentary or, or something, at least the Elizabeth Shue commentary. But this comes with uh, commentary with the Cheeto Brothers, another movie I haven't seen. You can always oh, get, get, get out of here. Holy that shit. About not seeing this. I'm going to see this very wow. soon. Wow. Um, probably this week or next week or something. Uh, clowns but yeah, so out of space. yeah, it uh, it's got like five featurettes. Uh, uh, the early, uh, the, the their early films, and um, music uh, by the Dickies. Two deleted scenes, music by the Dickies. So it's awesome. So there you go for that. I've got two more. I've got 
Mandy the Haunted Doll, which oh, we reviewed. Boy. Yes, we reviewed this, and uh, and this does have commentary, sort of? Sort of. Sort of, kind of, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Says a couple of things. Yeah, he talks occasionally. And then um, this one I'm really excited about. It's Minutes to Midnight, uh, directed by uh, Chris Olin Ray, which is Fred oh, Olin yeah, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's right. This is his new movie, right? Yeah, one of his new movies that's out. Yeah, he's got a right. bunch actually. Um, but I want to watch this, and I want to watch Circus Kane, which I also have, which was also Chris Olin Ray's. Um, it also has Willi it's, uh, stars William Baldwin, uh, De uh, Dominique Swain, Christopher Judge, and Richard Grieco. Wow. I mean, that's <laughs> that that right there is a cast. It's just you know, it's just so amazing. I mean, to me. Chris Olin Ray will forever be little Chris in Rollerblade, you know, the sheriff's son who couldn't get up on the roller skates. And he's like, thou must learn to skate or die, son. It was so Chris great. was in that? Yes. Awesome. We have to show you that film. That's, uh, that's okay. probably a What the Fuck Friday uh, movie. Which one? Roller... Uh, Rollerblade. Weren't we going to do that for one of the um, yeah, things? Yeah, because... there's a lot of nudity in there, so I wasn't sure. Oh, I wasn't okay. sure if, if Jen could handle it. Then we'll watch it for what we'll the fuck Friday probably um, at some point. But it's so crazy. I would love to. Do you have a? Do you have like? I have like, a video and I have a VHS. Of okay, it. so we'll watch the DVD. It's one of my favorite, 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 favorite movies. Um, Donald anyway, G. Jackson. Minutes, minutes to midnight. Um, basically, it seems like a like thirty one kind of thing where uh, um, uh, seven friends get kind of screwed over on, on New Year's Eve and and they end up um, uh, they end up they having to fight all these different creatures, these people and stuff. Like it says, uh, pray these strangers don't come calling. I hate when they do that, when they try to market it like up against a big time movie because The Strangers 2 had just come out or whatever and it was called Pray at Night. And it says, pray these strangers don't come calling. You know, like that's just, that's just weak. Um, but that's not Chris's fault or anything. And it's uncorked. I love uncorked entertainment. I'm a... Uh, I'm actually going to be reviewing four of their films. So I'm just, I'm a little disappointed that they did that. Like, they use that as their tagline. It's a marketing thing. It's a marketing thing. No, I mean, I don't blame them for doing it. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't particularly think that's a great idea. But that's my thing. But that's uh, not my last. Um, but. All right, so my next five includes the drive-in classic, The Creminators. Uh, and that the cremators? is... Cremators? The Cremators, Cremators, I, I'm not really sure. But that is from Harry Essex, who's one of my favorite stinky movie directors from the 70s. Um, he did Octoman, which we definitely will be doing on Indie Film Cafe. Uh, just not sure when yet. So I saw this there. And then, of course, the uh, one of the stars is Maria Del Aragon, Wonder Woman, and Blood Mania, and I, she was in Star Wars. I guess she had a walk and roll or something. Uh, like that. I don't remember. I don't know who she is. So I can't say. Is she that girl? Uh, yeah. I don't um, remember from Star Wars. But and anyway. Harry Essex also is one of the guys who was involved with uh, the original Creature from the Black Lagoon. He kind of went on to sort of try and make his own movies, and they're mostly pretty bad. So couldn't wait to get my hands it's, on yeah, this. Yeah, it's got an interview with this actress. Though, there you great. go. That's a plus. Uh, next, we have yet another uh, group of films. This is a four movie pack. Horror classics call it with uh, Night of the Living Dead, which I have, Christmas Evil, which I have, The Ghost, which I did not, and then this is really why I wanted to get it, is for the Snake People, it's a Boris Karloff movie, and it's towards the end, so it's kind of a crappy film, frankly, but, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's also kind of bad and silly, so I wanted to get my hands on that. Uh, Jack Hill, though, Jack Hill did a lot of good I stuff, know, so I know. I'm surprised he did that. Yeah, well, everybody's got that one crapper. Um, and then we have another one. This is a 20 movie pack. Oh, good lord. The digitally remastered Stranger Tales. Okay, so we've got Alien Species, The Amazing Transparent Man, Counter Blast, Doomsday Machine, Evil Brain from Outer Space, Frozen Alive, The Head, Idaho Transfer, The Lost Jungle, Night Fright, Night of the Blood Beast, Prisoners of the Lost Universe. Oh my god, that's so bad. Uh, Return of Dr. Mabus. Uh, Robot Pilot, I wonder what that's about. Star <laughs> Odyssey, Terror Creatures from the Grave. This is not a test, that's a classic. Uh, Unknown World, War of the Monsters, and Warriors of the Wasteland. 
Oh, uh, so all that kinds of lovely. great stuff in there. All of that. So, uh, yep, 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 yep. It's a lot of movies. It's great. And that's the thing. I mean, you can find these things for a couple bucks. You've got 20 movies. Most of them are going to be very entertaining one way or another. Uh, then I've got a Black Belt Theater double feature, including... Uh, Rage of the Drunk Mantis and... Or dance of the... Uh, dance of the Drunk Mantis. Dance or Rage? Dance. Maybe it's the Rage and Dance. Oh, it's Dance. Okay, Dance of the Drunk Mantis. And then... Uh, from China with Death. Okay. okay. <laughs> that, that I know, like it's really weird. China Death. <laughs> so, yep, yep, yep. So, we got to have our Chop Saki uh, stuff here. I don't believe that's, that's Shaw Brothers, is it? Because they're like the best ones. Oh, no, these are the Ewans. Okay. The Ewans, both yeah. of them are... I believe so. Oh, wow. So, oh, and they, they, they promote Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. There you go. Awesome. And the last one of this group is this really interesting uh, four-pack, Horror 101, which is a bunch of indie films, and we've got Death of a Ghost Hunter, Z Zombies Anonymous. Oh, I've only ever heard it as Zombies Anonymous. Uh, Beneath the Graves, and then Murder Loves Killers 2, which is an interesting film as well. I've heard about Zombies Anonymous. Looks like it's going to be fun. Um, that one I know about. That's about like a family of zombies who brings in a normal person and they have to try and adjust it because she's normal, not a zombie. Um, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, actually. Uh, yeah, it's like ZA, like AAZA, mm. you know, that's why they're saying that. It's pretty, pretty funny. Um, I've heard of Death of a Ghost Hunter. I don't know who did it. Um, does it say uh, You can pop it out of its insert. Yeah, because I think... No, they probably don't. No, it doesn't say. But I, and I, I can't look at my, my phone for it. But uh, I will say, I believe Death of a Ghost Hunter is somebody I've, I've watched other movies of theirs or mm -hmm. whatever. And um, looks kind of, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this, is, this is a really, really nice little indie film. That's the uh, collection that's specifically indie stuff. So it was nice to see that out there. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see who's W Wells. I don't know who these guys are. So, but I'm glad they did the the collection. It's pretty cool. Should be interesting. All right, my last uh, haul um, for for here. Uh, I've got some independent Blu-rays, but those are going to be on my Blu-ray Hunter uh, haul, and we've got you know, some that he's going to be doing for those too. So, um, but here we go. So to start off with, I've got, uh, conjoined that was sent to me from the director, Joe Grisafi. Um, it's got commentary, cast interviews, outtakes, short films, trailers, and more. And I think he did another movie. Um, can't remember what it was called, but he did another movie that was like right after this, um, or before, I think it was after, um, that kind of goes along with this. So. Cool. There you go. Conjoined. Sounds kind of fun. Oh, and it's got, it stars uh, Tom Long, Michelle Jones, Kiefer Barlow, Jacob Bird, and Sarah Gaston. So. Yeah, they're all Texan people. Okay. So this is a Texan uh, movie. Then I've got Karis Hell. Yay! I've been wanting to see this. Yes. Uh, we will... We will do this at some point. We'll review it. Um, yeah. I don't think it'll be a What the Fuck Friday because it's not, even though it is kind of like What the Fuck ish, it's not too What the Fuck ish, you know? Like, it's like it, you can follow along with One it. One fuck instead of four? Yeah, it's just like you just kind of, like, it's very easy to follow along. You're just like, whoa, what am I watching? Nice. This is pretty crazy. Uh, Steve Rosinski directed this film, and my favorite little uh, actress in it was. Um, uh, Haley J. Madison, who is just, she's just adorable, period. And in this movie, she's got one of the best scenes, and I'm not going to spoil it. Well, we were talking about it on uh, sort of typing back and forth on Facebook, and um, seemed like it was really, really cool. So I've been wanting to see this for a while. Yeah, definitely. Another one is Party Night, which I got on uh, Amazon. Uh, I got Carousel through Steve himself, went through his website. Um, and then... Uh, Carousel, uh, or not Carousel, uh, Party Night, uh, is directed by Troy Escamilla, and uh, I might be saying his name, pronouncing his name wrong, um, and I'm sorry. Uh, stars Tommy Vegas, uh, Ryan Poole, Billy Brannigan, Destiny Orndoff, um, and a few other people. I don't think you uh, wouldn't know many of these people. They're just, they're, 
the Tommy Vegas has been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, she's really sweet. Um, and, uh, um, and so is uh, Destiny Wardoff. Is, um, I'm going to tell you second, the next movie has her as well. So kind of goes together. But this is uh, put out by Wild Eye Releasing and has director's commentary, behind the screams. Um, behind the screams. Yeah, a lot of people do that now and I like it. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take it. Alternate scenes and uh, trailers. So there you okay. go. So uh, that is Party Night. Uh, it's a slasher movie. I saw it. I love it. Uh, it's just, you know, if you're in the mood for a slasher, uh, that would definitely, it's on Prime. Go go watch it on Prime. If you like it enough, go freaking buy it. It's 10 bucks. Well worth it. Uh, speaking of well worth it, Red Eye, which I believe is also on Amazon Prime, but it was on Prime before it got out. Um, it was put out by Terror Films, and uh, Destiny Warndoff co-wrote it. Uh, and produced it, I believe, with um, uh, with uh, Tristan Clay, uh, who's her real life boyfriend. They make uh, they made this movie. This is their first feature film. They've done a bunch of shorts, and uh, I think I did a review of it before. So um, won't have to do that again. I don't know if it's if I did the review on horror news or if I did it on here. But anyway, uh, it stars uh, Destiny Ordoff, Scott King. Um, uh, Heather Dorf uh, and Jessica Cameron so if you're in the mood for red eye which is just basically a guy with a bag on his head kind of like um, Jason in the, the second Friday the 13th and, and stuff um, he looks like that but his character is just I mean he's it's just about a bunch of guys going and doing um, research for high school or no college or something of their their paper and they or you know whatever they're doing like a video and they go out to find this urban legend of this guy named Red Eye, and just all hell breaks loose, and it's it's a, it's fun. It's once again it's another slasher, and if you're into that, you is know. he stopped by Visine? No, oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> it took me a second. I was like, what? And then I was like, Red Eye, ha ha ha. Are you right. Red Eye? So I also got Marauders uh, yesterday. Um, I went to Walmart and this was for like three fifty at Walmart. Uh, what is really cool about it and why I'm I'm definitely glad to have it is it's got commentary with uh, director Stephen C. Miller and, and cinematographer Brandon Cox. Um, Stephen has been on my show, my radio show, a bunch of times, and I think he even talked about Marauders before. Um, it stars Christopher Maloney from mm -hmm. Special Victims Unit, Bruce Willis. Oh my goodness. Um, Dave Batista uh -huh. and Adrian Grenier from um, uh, Entourage. So there you go. It's it's basically a cop cop movie about bank robbers robbing these banks, and um, there what might be do? like a I believe I believe there's some you know, somebody might be on the inside or whatever. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. But you know, it's very much like Point Blank, and except no surfers. Mm -hmm. Point Blank without the surfers. And no Patrick Swayze. Wait, Point Break without without the surfers. Point Blank is a different movie. Oh, that's, yeah, that's very different. That's, uh, what's her name? Um, one of the Fondas, right? Wasn't that Bridget Fonda? Um, I don't think so. Was it that? I think so. All right. Anyway, sorry. And last but not least, because I love this movie, it's Encino Man. And it does have, like, a production feature on it, but I was kind of bummed that I didn't have any more than that. I was watching this yesterday, and I, this movie still cracks me up. Like, this movie is hilarious. Um, you it, and your Pauly Shore movies. It's not just, well, I mean, in the beginning, yeah, his movies were great. And then, you know, toward the end of, like, after like four movies or something, his movies started to get kind of annoying. Like, I hated Jury Duty. Uh, I wasn't really even a big fan of Biodome. I felt like, I, I liked it when I first watched it, and years later, I'm like, his humor is just so bad. Um, See, for uh, me, it pretty much started way, way down and just kind of went even sub more more subterranean. I've never liked Paul Shore. I've loved him. Uh, Son-in-Law is one of my favorites. Uh, Encino Man and Son-in-Law, which is just great. Megan Ward is in this movie. I have to say, I did actually see this in the theater. I got dragged to it by his friend. She said, you'll love it, you'll love it. I was like, oh, my God, this is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got uh, Megan Ward, mm -hmm. uh, who we know from, like, Arcade and a bunch of other stuff. But... Um, it's also got Rose McGowan for like two minutes, you know, screen time. But she like plays this character that just 
randomly she was just an extra basically she was she had be you know she was a paid extra cause she got um uh, more money or whatever for uh, like a couple and lines. I will say I'll watch just about anything with Megan Ward in it. She's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I mean it's not bad. I mean I like the movie. I, it's one of my favorites, but it doesn't have to be his, you know, obviously. But next, All our right. last. My last group of three. We have the classic 1986 Night of the Creeps, which is, is this a very strange movie. Um, about aliens who's frozen and then these college kids sort of thaw them and then anytime the alien kills someone they come back as zombies and um, it's just it's just a strange crazy over-the-top film and um, uh, Tom Akins is in there who Atkins. yeah because he was like in every movie in the 80s it seemed yeah um, it's, just, it's just a classic classic film so uh, it also always had, wanted it in DVD. Also has Jason Lively, which Jason is Lively. Blake Lively and uh, Robin Lively's uh, brother, right. and uh, Jill Whitlow, who's been in a lot of um, '80s movies. Okay. I think she might have been like Weird Science and some other some of those other movies, and one of the Nightmare on Elm Street, something like right. that. You know. So this is something I hadn't seen in since the '80s. So when I saw it out there, I had forgotten about it. I was like, oh, gotta grab that. So I did. Classic. And then we've got a pair of stinkers that I definitely got from Amazon. I specifically got these for Indie Film Cafe. Um, so first we've got Phoebe, the Xenophobic Experiments. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe that other than it's kind of like uh, somebody's home movie. And um, yeah, it's very, very strange and very, very... Uh, I don't want to say amateurish, but um, it's 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 not particularly uh, professional. But it comes loaded with all kinds of extras and commentary and fun it? stuff. Looks like an actual feature-length film. Absolutely, absolutely. Back in black. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't wait to show you guys this. Uh, I've not seen the whole thing. I've only seen parts of it, but um, it definitely looks like it belongs on Indie Film Cafe. <laughs> And then finally, one I can't wait to show these guys uh, is a trauma film, and it is Actium Maximus, War of the Alien Dinosaurs, which is this kind of weird digital movie puppet thing with uh, some kind of some kind of alien monsters, dinosaurs taking over the world, and it's just, it's very it's it's trauma, it's traumarific, it's definitely. And it comes with this uh, oh, yeah. bonus and it's, feature. That's right. There's a bonus feature, Star, War, Star Worms 2, Attack of the Pleasure Pods, which is another reason I got it, because I've always wanted to have that, because <laughs> it's also pretty awful. Sounds like it. God, so, yeah, that is that is a quality double feature right there. Yeah, and it's got a Mickey Your Own Damn Movie uh, lesson. Yep, so but it's awesome. got the traditional intro from Lloyd Kaufman, because he's it's always done a blessing. Yeah, he blesses movies that aren't even his, uh, <laughs> aren't even from That's what he does. Uh, things, you know, That's he's what he does. such a nice guy. Goodness from trauma. I know. Um, they keep giving so much. So anyway, well, that's it. That's it for our uh, thing. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. Uh, check out the Blu-ray Hunter if you want to see our Blu-ray all. Uh, that's going to be out like a couple days later. Right. I think a day later than this. I think this is coming out on Monday. Uh, Blu-ray Hunter is coming out on Tuesday, and then um, our updates and other things are coming out. And when they come out, it'll be October. It'll be October tomorrow. It's crazy. It's October tomorrow. Crazy. So we're doing this on Sunday, and then we're releasing it on Monday. So it'll be October. So happy October, everybody. Yeah, yeah happy October. So in case you're in wondering, future. this is what we're doing. We're sort of doing our end of the month haul. You know, so that's what we'll be doing every month. Mm -hmm. So. End of the month haul, and then, I guess, yeah, so this is a big haul, actually. This is a big haul. So thank you guys so much for checking us yep. out. Um, yep, join yep, us. Yep. Uh, like us on Facebook at Indie Film Cafe, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all Indie Film Cafe. Also, uh, IndieFilmCafe.reviews and StickFlickProductions.com for Yay. more information. All right, see you. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fail!